On today's Locked On Twins, we're going to talk about the Twins adding three and dropping three from their 40-man roster. Dave Brown is back. we got a full jam-packed and fun show for you. This is Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked on Twins. I'm your host with the least, Brandon Warren. You can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And he's back. He's back. Our Dave Brown is back. Dave, how are we doing? Well, we're doing better than yesterday. At some point today on Wednesday, I started to feel better. So I, like, I've touched the bottom of the sick pool and I'm on my way back up. That's all we ask. Better than yesterday. And so glad to hear it. Uh, Great show in your absence with Greg Masterson. Highly recommend people go back and listen or watch it. No face reveal for old Greggy. So uh, you'll have to be satisfied with just listening to him. But a good show. But we're glad to have Dave back. Thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. which. yeah, that's free too. Anyway, as uh, of course, too, as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, we're your team every day. You all have been tremendous in the chat, whether it's during the show, when it runs, or after the fact, commenting, t- sharing your opinions. Love it. It's It's been absolutely great. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On for twenty bucks off your first purchase. If you're already a member, though, got kind of a fun little deal as well. Um, Click the wrong one there. Uh, all users use the promo code Vegas One Hundred to get a hundred dollars off your purchase of a ticket to the big game. And I think you know what I mean there. A uh, hundred bucks can't really sniff at that. So check out Game Time, Dave. Uh, well, first, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24 7, yes, even at three in the morning, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, like Dave and me, plus our national shows covering every league, like Lockdown MLB with our good pal Sully. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. Also, check out Locked On Minnesota, which has a 24-7 streaming channel as well. Dave, a lot of moving and shaking with the Twins 40-man roster today. And I want to ask you, first of all, because I want to talk about the the out. Out with the old. Jordan Balazovic, so one of their former top prospects. He's been through the ringer a little bit. And then Bubba Thompson and Daniel Duarte, uh, we hardly knew ye. Um, does anything really trigger, trip your trigger with those guys? Because honestly, uh, I saw a story recently that Balazovic throws that uh, the death ball that they've been kind of trying to figure out based on uh, pitch plots and all that stuff. And it's something Jordan Montgomery is really well known for. And I think they actually, uh, I don't know if Jawan Duran was on there, but it's basically a certain shape breaking ball. Um, I think if he clears waivers, the Twins would probably still be happy to have him as they would the other two. But um, Balazovic, to me, is the more surprising one. Well, he's a guy who, you know, was a top 100 prospect overall. And then the pandemic hit. So he's you never know if uh, players like Jordan – um had their their progress held back at all by the I mean they literally did have their progress held back but by the pandemic and the weird rules that resulted in the lack of opportunities and you just uh you can't wonder anymore about uh you know what could have been the twins have uh, made up their mind and going forward with different players so um but you just have to think that uh maybe the the disruption in the world had something to do with the disruption in his the arc of his career and you uh that's too bad if that's true yeah and i feel like the pandemic hit at a really rough time for twins pitching prospects where yeah balazovic would have been you know better off they had a few other guys who 
had arm injuries at pretty much the worst possible time, or they missed the 2020 season because there was no minor league season. Like any any combination of efforts that pushed back what was supposed to be a quote unquote pipeline of pitching. Now, I don't say that derisively because they've had some pop up guys turn into dudes, whether it's Bailey Ober, uh, Louis Varland, and we'll see what happens with a, a few other guys. But um, the the fact that the 2020 season derailed a large portion of those guys, um, yeah, I mean it, it's a it's a necessary evil. There's not much you can do to to fix it, and they had their reasons for canceling the season. But uh, I'll be curious to see if Belazovic clears and stays in the organization because. Um, the numbers weren't that good last year. Like the strikeout to walk was unsightly. And he also too um, didn't really start the year off very well. He got punched in the jaw in an early February altercation. If you want to call it that, I don't think it's really an altercation, but um, broke his jaw. And it just kind of, I think set his year off on a bad tone uh, for that. He'd had a tough year in, uh, in the minor leagues. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I know what they liked about him was his fastball shape and, you know, a few other things that, that made him a highly uh, coveted prospect or, or when they picked him up in the draft. Um, but I, 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 I'm curious to see where he goes from here. I'm not tore up about it, um, but he's the one that Twins fans are going to have some sort of attachment to, if, uh, if anybody. Still just 24 years old, and you mentioned the possibility that maybe he'll clear waivers and come back. And, you know, as fans, every every fan, you know, isn't necessarily a prospect expert or a baseball expert, but they know they have that feeling And from past seasons. This is the time of year where guys are coming and going from the 40-man roster, and there's lots and lots of transactions right before spring training and during spring training. And uh, so it's a time when there's a lot of movement on the edges and the margins of the roster. So, um, you know, if the, if the Royals or the Royals, if the, if the twins think Jordan, uh, still has something and he, he gave them almost 25 innings at the major league level last year. So they can't think too negatively of him. Yep. And he, you know, he's, he survived a bunch of recent acquisitions that the team made, but, but not the most recent ones. So, uh, like you said, maybe there's a possibility that the teams will kind of, uh, the other teams will look at his numbers and not be terribly attracted to them. And there's, there's players like Jordan all over the league uh, that are, you know, hoping to uh, get by right now because uh, they're, you know, they're cut off a 40 man roster. That doesn't mean their career's over, but it's definitely a time of uh, uncertainty for them and their families. Walk me through the waiver process right now, as far as how it works like strategically, because so Teams are adding right now. Like there's still a fair number of players available for a team to add Jordan Balazovic to their 40 man roster. Chances are their 40 is either full or close to full, just like the twins was in this instance. Um, and they're going to have to then subtract someone they, they previously liked at least enough to keep them to their, on their 40 men to this point of the off season. Um, I feel like there's a, an element of strategy for when you claim and DFA guys now, obviously claims you can't time them out. They're only available when they're available, right. but I think Balazovic being dumped now, as opposed to let's say early in the season when teams are playing competitive games and need arms, um, you know, again, now, now, and also at the end of spring training, there's player movement, but there's also 40 man crunches. You got to add guys who have opt outs and that sort of thing. Uh, how do you look at this as his likelihood of passing through compared to let's say in May. Well, I think one thing that, um, that, that is going to activate soon, maybe even tomorrow is the, uh, 60 man, a 60 day disabled list that changes how, uh, teams do business in lots of different ways. That's sort I think of I saw that changes. The 14th on that for the twins. Was it the fort? Is it that late? Well, for I think some it's reason. It the Dodgers on when you are, record. Yep, yeah, I think the Dodgers or somebody, whoever's uh, got some early. Sorry to interrupt, Dave. I don't. I don't mean to do that, but I think I saw 14th. The Twins can put guys on the 60, which 
might be a Matt Cantorino thing. There's probably a few other guys that are at least in consideration. But it's uh so I guess I thought it was it's it seems more logical to me that it would be a league wide thing, but also uh, more of an MLB thing that it's up to teams and reporting dates and their own individual schedules. That could be too. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, so, but the greater point is that with the addition of the, the 60 man, uh, (laughs) 60 man roster spot, boy, that team's going to be very injured. If they're putting 60 guys on the D on the IL, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but that opens up uh, more opportunities for players um, on teams, you know, own rosters to kind of hide guys and hedge bets and that kind of thing. And that is what is changing here in the next few days mm-hmm. over Major League Baseball that will give teams more opportunities to slot guys, to hide them on the injured list, to open up 40 man roster spots for players like Jordan or other players that uh, they, they've got in mind for adding to their roster. So I think um, one, one, if the twins want him back, I think one thing that they have going for them is the twins are, are a lot like other teams in that, you know, the, the white Sox and the Royals and the tigers and so forth also have their Jordan Balazoviches and want to make space for them. And yep. uh, might not be interested in someone else's Jordan because they got their own. So, you know, at, at this point, uh, but one thing that he might have going for him is his uh, limited but still accrued major league experience. He's got 24 innings in the third last year. And mm-hmm. there are some teams that are going to be short on relief pitching that maybe had a couple scouts at his performances and might have an idea about what they can do with him. So um, there, I think there's a pretty good chance that somebody will pick him up and bring him to camp. And, uh, yeah. but that, of course, that doesn't mean the twins might not get him back at some point later on anyway. Yeah. It's not like he's a rule five pick, but at the same time, if he passes through waivers again, uh, you know, all bets are off and maybe he doesn't get claimed at all, but if you're Oakland or the white Sox, you got a chance to grab a guy who might have some upside. I saw on fan graphs before we go to break. I do want to say this, that, uh, the projected playoff odds are actually higher for the A's than the white Sox. And, um, that that just that's not very nice it's 0.8 to 0.5 like playoff Mm -hmm. odds or something like that so i mean it's splitting literal hairs but that just surprised me i don't know probably not statistically significant but surprised me nonetheless uh let's take a quick second and we'll come back to that here first though a word from our friends at game time Oh, right. With the big game upon us, Game Time wants to be your source for all things tickets, whether it's for the big game or any game happening near you that in your mind is big. So if you're looking for tickets to whatever's happening near you, is there uh, you know, a little soccer at Allianz uh, Field or is there something going on at Target Center? If that's the case, Game Time is the place for you. It's not got to be a frustrating you know, uh, process for finding these tickets. Game time wants to make it easy. They want to make it affordable and they want to make it uh, basically no hidden fees, no nothing like that. You can look through the app and there's tons of options. There's shows, there's concerts, there's uh, obviously sports games of all different sorts. Pretty much anything you want to do entertainment wise is on there. They have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, you name it, and you also get to see where you're sitting from. So if you are going to sit in Section C, Row 3 at a theater downtown, they can show you what that'll look like from your seat, which is pretty awesome to me. And it gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Not only do you see where you are, but the all-in price shows you up front what you're going to pay, and you know you're going to get a great deal before you check out. Quick, Two quick taps, and you have your tickets. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Now that's for new own uh, users, but all users can use the promo code Vegas One Hundred to get a hundred dollars off the purchase of a ticket to the big game. So if you find yourself in Vegas, that's the way to go. Use Vegas One Hundred, and it's a hundred bucks off a purchase of a ticket to the big game. Terms apply. 
Again, create an account and re redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N or Vegas 100. And you either get $20 off your first purchase or $100 off the purchase of a ticket to the big game. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Dave Brown, I did want to ask you, so the difference with Bubba Thompson and Daniel Duarte is that they have a combined like 17 seconds in the organization. Um, I feel like it's good for business or to keep yourself, like there's no reason not to carry 40 guys. So claiming guys who might be interesting, might be decent, whatever, makes sense to me. Uh, to a lot of fans, though, it won't make sense. You know, why did they dump Ryan Jensen already, although he cleared waivers and is outright into St. Paul and will go to spring training. Uh, but with guys like Thompson and Duarte, I, part of me wonders, like with where the twins are on the waiver priority list, which is pretty far back based on how their record was, um, the fact that they get these guys maybe gives them some hope that if they run them through waivers again, there's a decent chance of them clearing because they made it to the twins in the first place. Yeah, I think um, it's it's always tricky when you know you ask like for example with with Jordan would other teams be more interested in, in him later? And I think it all depends on you know what's the last memory that these teams have of these guys pitching. And it's whenever Jordan was with the with the Twins last summer. Um, and you know you see guys on waivers and you get. Uh, you know, I've never been in a front office other than, you know, my fantasy baseball team. So I don't know, but you get your, you get guys that you're curious about. There's a group of players that either your scouts have scouted or that you liked at some point. Um, and you, you have this, uh, th this group of players. And if one of them becomes available, suddenly you get really intrigued. Like, well, you know, uh, this guy hasn't really come through before for this other organization, but maybe our guys, uh, could tweak him a little bit and, tap that uh, potential that other teams haven't been able to do. Everybody always thinks they can, you know, it's uh, that they can fix the guy. Uh, maybe if not necessarily if anything was terribly wrong, but that, uh, you know, well, if, get him in our organization and he'll be the best version of himself. So I think there's a lot of that going on in front offices, uh, you know, on the margins mm -hmm. with these players who, um, they, they get really excited. It's kind of like found money. You're playing with house money. It's not a very expensive addition. Um, the grass is always greener, you know, name your metaphor or your, your analogy or whatever. And teams are interested in making these changes sometimes just to make changes, just to, to keep things moving. Um, sometimes you can, uh, you know, kind of sell yourself short and maybe make a boo-boo with a transaction like that. But I think at the same time, most of these guys are not going to end up being stars anyway. So uh, this is where teams get bold uh, and to a certain extent in trying to add on the margins. I like when you said uh, they can fix him. I think the twins actual mantra is we can fix him. It's kind of their thing where whoever they take, they're going to find a way to make better. And and in some respects, I mean, Pablo Lopez is a really good success story for them. And then he went from a very solid two, three to I think what is undeniably an ace. Um, I want to, I want to circle back one more time to the roster crunch that these teams are going through. Now, obviously the twins didn't strategically decide to sign a bunch of guys at this point in the off season for this reason. But again, do you think that the fact that there's roster crunch now, like there's a pretty decent element of strategy for the twins to put Jordy blaze through right now where they might have their best chance to, you know, sneak him through. Yeah, I, I definitely think they think in those terms, um, you know, we, we don't have uh, you know, any recent performances to go on. Uh, teams are probably, you know, they'll chance they, the twins keep probably keep track of what teams were scouting their players when, but it's, it's so long ago that, that who knows how much that factors in anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I think so. Uh, but you know, it, it, at, at the same time, teams will see, oh, this Jordan guy was a top 100 prospect. That's kind of intriguing to me. Uh, you know, we maybe we haven't seen him perform that much, but we know that with that with that kind of pedigree, I think he was a fourth or a fifth round pick. So not top of the draft, but still, uh, you know, early ish rounds. 
so um yeah i i think they're 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 hopeful to 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 be sneaky at this point with the 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 glut of other teams moves that are going on that are similar to what the the twins have done right now anyway so there's lots of guys possibly changing hands and it's a time where you hope people slip through and you keep your organizational depth so if they, a casual fan, and again, I don't say that as a negative, not everybody has to live and die with this stuff. If they come to you and say, well, why the heck did they claim these guys and then dump them and claim them and dump them? Um, how, you know, we've done, I think, a pretty good job 20 minutes in of explaining why we think they would. But is there anything else like that you would explain to maybe, you know, if you, let's say if I was telling my son who's 12, my son is not 12, but if he was hypothetically 12, um, you know, dad, why do they keep dumping these guys when they just picked them up um you know what would you tell a fan like that well those kind of moves are always going on there's a lot of i don't want to just call it guesswork because that um you know makes it seem like they they really don't know what they're doing they're just guessing but there's a little bit of that going on um there's a little bit of hope and crossing your fingers and what what changes in an off season is um uh, leverage changes and value changes. So like Jay Jackson stays available through um, longer than maybe they expected. So they're like, this guy really had good stuff last year, even though he's older, maybe we should spend a major league uh, roster, a 40 man roster spot on him and, and big league money. But and they that's not necessarily what's that. They could have just claimed him on waivers. That's the kind of puzzling thing was that he cleared waivers, outright waivers in October or whatever it was like that to me is just wild. He gets a one-year deal with an option. Right. Well, you know, is that the wild part or is it that uh, he went through waivers? You know, is that, yeah. you know, is that the, the issue that um, the surprising part of it uh, from a, a league wide standpoint, you know, is, is that a guy that probably should have been on somebody's roster already as a 40 man guy. And it's just kind of a realization like, Hey, this is a guy that we, you know, we should protect and uh, give incentive to. And uh, sometimes those things, you know, in your big strategic offseason plan, especially on the margins, you don't know who's going to come up until they do. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you don't know what the, the free agent pitching market's going to look like until it forms. And, you know, who's left from that standpoint and what are they getting and what's it worth and um, as far as how much money you want to put into it. So uh, these, these are things that the, the values on the, on the edges is it's always shifting. So you, you never know when you're going to find, uh, you know, to put it in money ball terms, the, uh, the efficiency uh, in, in a player that maybe a few months ago, it wouldn't have seemed that efficient to pick him up and put major league money into him. So that kind of stuff changes when the markets change and, uh, other players kind of establish the the market and what they're worth, and then you know, it it changes uh, how you do little individual deals like this. So that's why there's all kinds of movement here on the edges. Let's have a quick word from Pando when we come back. I want to talk about the additions. We've obviously covered some of them in depth, but they did add a reliever who actually was in the organization for a hot minute back in 2019. But again, first a word from Fando. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Again, if you're like me, you look for the best spot on the couch, the best food, the best spot to watch the commercials, all that fun stuff. And there's a game going on, too. Should be a good one. Uh, I'll be wearing my old Jerry Rice jersey as uh, as a fun little nod to my fandom from back in like 1998. And I'll be making my special meatballs. I don't know if I told you that, Dave Brown, but uh, they have grape jelly in them. So. We'll see what happens, but uh, they're amazing. Anyway, though, if you want to get a win or two or three to end your season, uh, FanDuel's got it for you. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58 between the Chiefs and the Niners, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and pretty much anything else under the sun that you can imagine. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Seems pretty easy to me. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel and a special official, easy for me to say, sports book partner of the NFL. 
All right, we're back to bring things full circle. And so the three additions to the Twins 40-man roster that necessitated these drops were Carlos Santana, which we've talked about uh, in depth. Uh, Jay Jackson, you know, interesting bullpen arm with uh, what, what I really thought was his splits against were pretty interesting. Um, and I think he, you know, slider guy. But Zach Weiss, or I think it's Weiss. I don't think it's Weiss, like a beer from Wisconsin. Um very interesting. He was in the Twins organization for the first half of 2019, gets released in July. Um, he had a little bit of big league experience in 2018 with the Reds. And by a little, I mean he literally faced four batters and got none of them out, gave up two home runs. About as bad as it can get. Um, surfaces with the Angels in 2022, 13 and a third kind of so-so interesting innings. And then last year with uh, the Red Sox and the Angels, again, too many home runs, but the stuff mix is interesting. And uh, let me just say this. He's thrown the slider 61.6% of his career, or 61% of the time in his career. So again, the slider uh, strikes again. Are you surprised? You're muted again, Dave. <laughs> How about now? The, the cough is is still lurking, so I just I don't want to. No, it's good. The people with that. So Zach Weiss, uh, you warned me about the Twins front office that they are sl happy sliders, and I'm happy when I'm eating sliders, but they're happy when they're adding pitchers who throw sliders. And it's, I mean, Zach's uh, like 31. Mm -hmm. So he's been throwing sliders for a while as a professional. Um, that's the only thing that bothers me about that kind of thing. That's a, it's supposedly hard on the on the on the arm on the elbow. Yeah, but if it's what you can get people out with, that's what you use. So he's a a lanky dude uh, with a with a slider. Um, I guess you can't have enough. It's it, it's a little. It reminds me a little bit of what they do down in Tampa, St. Pete. Where they uh -huh. just bring in pitchers who, you know, I'm not saying the Twins do this because I don't know, but they bring in a lot of pitchers down with the Rays and uh -huh. they 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 churn them up and they spit them out and uh, you know do for for us as as much as you can while you can because it's not going to be long. So this it's organizational depth. He's got, uh, like you said, he gives up too many home runs, but. Uh, the twins might be able to get something out of uh, Zach uh, or maybe St. Paul will, but yep. it's a little more organizational depth. When I, this is, I don't know why this is how I feel about guys like him, but the long hair with the beard, it gives me like an outlaw vibe or like a cowboy vibe. Like you show up in a trench coat and cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. That's one of those. I, I got that from Jared Burton back in the day. Like just some guys have that vibe or you could just if they really get going you could kind of sense that they would look like kind of a badass out there and for whatever reason zach weiss checks that box for me uh, is there anybody else who finished last season with that look in the twins bullpen are they needing a hairy right hander well chris paddock has i think some pictures of him in the past where he's dressed up and i don't know if it's like a bolo tie hat whatever but I, I think he's pretty well known as the you know that type of dude but um I don't know. I mean, sometimes in order to fill a market inefficiency, you have to create one. And maybe that's what the twins have done here. Yeah, maybe. I, you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't look down on anyone or whatever. It just, but when I see guys like that, they just look too hot. You know, I yeah. can't imagine there being, you know, in the middle of summer, how uncomfortable it must be to pitch, to, to perform all these physical, uh, athletic, uh, feats. Uh, so, and be so hairy. I mean, it's just uh, that you sweat enough out there. I, I don't know why you want to bring that on yourself, but uh, Zach Weiss, you do you. Well, those three additions, very interesting. I pulled up the Twins 40-man roster. I'm trying to think of if – I don't know where Matt Cantorino is in terms of his recovery from arm stuff. He could be a 60-day option here early in the season, which would open up a spot. Uh, again, we don't know Josh Stalmont's status. It seems to be that he's healthy, but – you know, he's coming off a very serious surgery not that long ago. And, uh, you know, 
there's a lot of things we don't know. Will they trade somebody? Will, um, will they cut somebody? It, you know, we didn't necessarily see Jordy Blaze getting cut, and now that's the case. But I'm trying to kind of get a feel for like if this matters, like how many more additions they can make before they start dipping into the the 40 where it's guys they really really like as opposed to guys they just claimed off waivers in the last few days. Um, so yeah, we'll see if they get creative with using the 60 early on in spring training and what that looks like. A couple quick news and notes before we run. Gary Sanchez, former twin, gets a big league deal with the Brewers, seven million and an option. Any uh, any thoughts there? I had some thoughts, but I think that they're the twins are probably set with who they have uh, rather than getting any more additional catchers. Uh, yeah. And Sanchez. His hitting profiles just a little too much like Jeffers for it to be. Uh, it's redundant to me. So no, I just I, I don't. I just think it's interesting that he's still good luck around. to him. Nice little run with the Padres. Luke Farrell, former Twin, signs with the Nats. Angels interested in bringing back Gio Urshela. Aaron Sanchez was throwing for, or will be throwing for teams on Friday. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero beats the Jays in arbitration. Always interesting to me when guys of his ilk go to arbitration. And then the last one, Marlins DFA former top prospect Jordan Groshans. Um, I thought he might be part of the Barrios trade and said they get Austin Martin and Simeon Woods Richardson. But yeah, it's funny how prospects can uh, can flame out like that. And Jordan Groshans, who may in fact clear waivers and stay in the organization, um, has taken quite a tumble in the last couple of years. It is funny just how at some point there's like a a realization or a uh, you know I don't know what the word is but it, there's probably a better word for it yeah the guy just isn't what he you thought he would be and yep. uh, and you just have to move on well hey thanks Dave glad to hear that you're feeling better this has been locked on twins and we'll see you 